This is the toughest 24 hour race in the world. There's so many things that can happen. But as an overall experience, this race is a battle. The big difference here is car count and traffic. The track is just brutal. It's not really a complicated track, but it is just brutal. You don't win this race spending time in the pits. You know, you just gotta be really smart and you gotta have a bit of luck. I'd rather be lucky than good any day. It's an awesome event and one that I really enjoy. The 2009 Rolex 24 at Daytona began with all the pomp and spectacle we've come to expect from this historic race. But as usual, it wasn't long after the green flag wave that the competition heated up, proving once again just why this is one of the toughest races in all of motorsports. A 24-hour odyssey, and as day became night, it was time for the front runners to strap in for the long haul. When we left you, it was a Brumos Penske Ganassi Battle Royal in the Daytona prototype class, while in GT, the racers groups number 66 jumped ahead of the Farnbacher Lowell's 86 after a scary pit stop. You know, both our cars ran really well, and um, we had some motor problems here at the end. But Roush Yates always does a great job for us. We'll have to get it fixed and, and go on the VIR in April. After the long Florida night, dawn is beginning to break over Daytona Beach. It might be a poetic moment if everybody up and down the pit lane wasn't simply too tired to be artistic. Welcome to nine hours of live speed HD coverage of the 47th running of the Rolex 24 at Daytona, taking you to the finish at 3.30 Eastern time this afternoon, and then on to meet the winners. Here's a look at the top 10 in the Daytona prototype class. Now we should warn you, this is not the top 10 in the overall running order. As you see, the top six cars all running on the same lap. But once you get past the seventh place number 77 in the hands of Matteo Bobby, the GT cars begin to weigh in. There's the 99 of Jimmy Vassar. That team has had terrible problems. Even with three-time Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson on board, they are 24 laps behind. And we have a lot of stories to tell you about how the evening has gone. The two-time defending champion, Scott Pruitt, is currently in fourth place. He has a story to tell as well. In GT, Darmanek Farnbacher and Emmanuel Collard continue a battle between the two biggest teams in class, Farnbacher Lowell's and the Racers Group that's been going on since the green flag. And as I mentioned, some of those GT cars are running in the top 10 overall right now. Here's a look at the cars out of the race as we are counting down less than eight hours and 30 minutes to go. In the DP class, both of the Michael Shank racing cars, you heard from team, o team owner Michael Shank who said there were engine problems. The Allegra Motorsports cars, last year's GT class winners who have moved up to the prototype class have also suffered their problems. Both of the Crone Racing Proto Auto Lola Fords are now out and as you see, a healthy helping of the GT cars gone as well. Once again, it's been an interesting Rolex 24 at Daytona as we welcome you to our announced booth high above start finish. I'm Bob Farsha, along with longtime Rolex competitor David Hobbs. David, pretty typical Daytona. Even the front runners are not immune to difficulty. Well, they're not, Bob. But I must say that the uh, top six front runners, it is quite extraordinary how those guys are still on the same lap. And the times they did all through the night, they're doing 43s, 42s, qualifying pole position was a 40.5. So 42 at race pace is pretty damn good anyway. Those guys have been hammering around there all night, changing the lead from time to time, the two Brumos cars, the Penske car, obviously, and the two Ganassi cars. Very, very quick. Very sorry to see the number six car of Ormondinger out. He was going so well. Here's a look at your race leader as Team Penske returns as a standalone operation to the Rolex 24. Recall last year they were here in a joint effort with Wayne Taylor Racing, but now the captain has his crew on hand and they are having a triumphant run. But we still have a long way to go, nearly eight and a half hours. When dawn comes, it gives the crews up and down the pit lane a big lift and they will need it after the night that most of them have had. But as David pointed out, the number 16 car from Penske Racing just keeps rolling along 
in what is basically a two-team battle atop Daytona prototype between Penske with its single entry for Timo Bernard, Ryan Briscoe, and Roman Dumas, and the historic favorites here at Daytona, Brumos Racing, who sat on pole for the race. There's your leader in the GT category, the 86, Dominic Vonbacher. He and his teammates have had an interesting story to tell. Really, nobody immune from difficulties. Well, their front tire change, as we saw in that little uh, throwback there, got clipped by the wing of the 87 car when it came into the pits. It hooked him round the elbow. That's right. It's incredibly lucky that it didn't uh, break his arm because he just went straight on with changing the tire. And it's also very lucky for the car that it didn't rip the wing off. That's right. We spoke with Kevin Roush, who's sharing that car with Matthew Marsh, Eric Lux, and Dominic Farnbacher. Roush was in the car when his right front tire changer went running around the front of the car of the stop, only to be hooked by the rear wing end plate of their sister car, thrown through the air. But even though I don't know who that crewman is, I can tell you what, he is a performer. He jumped right back to his feet, went right back to his job, and worried about how badly he might be hurt later I bet on. He's got a blue arm on the inside of his uh, left elbow, though. But uh, a great run by these GT cars. And of course, the Paul Edwards car, the first of the Pontiacs, the 07 car, is just uh, three laps behind these guys. And they did incredibly well. They qualified way down, and they pulled up, and, it's, uh, and they have led this class from time to time over the, over the last 15 hours. That's right. In addition to those six DP cars all on the same lap, the top three cars in GT are also on the same lap. It's going to be a great run all the way to the finish. We'll be back in a moment to meet our pit reporters as we begin nine hours of live coverage here on Speed. Stay with us.